if you're using MIDI at all in your productions, then what I'm about to show you is something that you should definitely know if you're using Cubase, because this is going to save you loads of time and it will make you more productive. Let me show you. You know, I'm always raving about how Cubase is the king of MIDI when it comes to DAWs, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. But like I said, don't take my word. It's all about what you like. The reason I'm saying this is because I've worked for 20 years in professional studios and I've used pretty much every DAW out there. And when it comes to MIDI, I'm sorry, nothing can beat Cubase. There are DAWs that come close, but not quite there. So let me show you one thing that whenever I'm working in another DAW, I'm missing big time. And this is going to be extremely useful if you are programming synths, if you are a film composer and you're working a lot with sample libraries, with key switches, with lots of controllers like mod wheel, expression, breath controllers, CC controllers, sustain, all these things. What I'm about to show you, it's something that every film composer I know uses in Cubase and they can't live without it. So let me show you. I have a simple MIDI part recorded here. This is uh, my Apollo expansion for Patch Up 2. Feel free to check it out if you want and if you like it and you decide to grab a copy, I really appreciate it because this way you're supporting the channel. Now, let me show you what's going on here. Let me play this. So as you can see already, there are some MIDI controllers here that I've programmed. So if I open this, I'm going to open my key editor in full view so that you can see what's going on. So here are notes and what's going to happen when you open the key editor first time by default, you're going to get the velocities, which is great. This is something that is going to be useful most of the time. Now, if you check here though, you will probably know this, but you can see which controllers have been used for this MIDI part. They have a little dot next to them, aftertouch, modulation, and sustain. So I was also using my sustain pedal when I was playing this part. So the first thing that I want to show you is something that I think I talked about this in the things that you should know about the key editor video that I've done. I'm gonna link it right here. So there's a slow way that pretty much every DAW can do. So you can say, okay, I want to check out the aftertouch. Oh, that's what the aftertouch does. Uh, or maybe I want to check out the mod wheel. This is what the mod wheel does. I sustain, here are my sustain pedals, and so on and so forth. This is fine, you know, if you're starting out with Cubase, this is probably what you've been doing. But there are some really cool shortcuts that you can use. So in my case, check what I'm going to do. I'm going to press Control Alt C. If I was on the Mac, it would be Command Alt C. This is a shortcut that I've created and I can do this. Boom! Straight away, I can see all my controllers, all the controllers that I've been using for this specific MIDI part. So immediately I can see exactly what's going on. Of course, my velocity, my aftertouch, my modulation CC1, and my sustain pedal. All these things are right there. And now I can immediately go ahead and edit them. This is already super useful. But if you're doing a lot of MIDI programming, if you are doing sound design, if you're programming sims and you have loads and loads of controllers to take care of and you haven't entered any notes yet, let me show you something that's really cool. Here is where you can select show used controllers. So this is what I've assigned this shortcut to. So if I do this, boom, I can immediately show this. But here's the thing. If you know you're going to be doing a lot of programming, I can go ahead and add more controllers like this. I can go to the plus symbol and then add any controller that I want. And if a controller isn't there, you can just add it right here. You can go to set up available controllers and you can take CC0, for example, and add it to the visible ones, okay? Pretty straightforward. But now, if I wanted to record a piano and I have this control, this would be already too much information that I don't need. So what I really need is actually just the sustain. So I'm going to remove this one, remove this lane, 
sustain and velocity because that's what a piano uses. Now, once you do this, you can actually go here and say, I want to save this as a preset and I can name this preset piano. There we go. Now, every time you recall that preset, it's going to show you just the controllers that you've set up for the piano. So let me show you because I have quite a few presets that I've created. So for example, if I go here and I go modulation wheel, you will see that I only get modulation wheel because I know that I'm using quite a few sims that only use modulation wheel. So I don't want to see the velocity, I just want to see the modulation wheel. Now if I go here and select piano controllers, I can see that immediately I have velocity and sustain, right? This is so cool. And then I can say, you know what? I want modulation and expression for my string libraries. Boom! Now I have modulation and expression. So for my string libraries, most of the times, this is what I use, CC1 and CC11. But what about if I want to have modulation wheel and pitch bend for synths, for sub basses? Boom! Now I have the pitch bend and the modulation. And I can go on and on and on. And then if I want to go back to velocity, boom, velocity, and I'm back to a simple velocity view. So as you can tell, this is extremely useful. Now, if that wasn't enough, you can actually program these to be recalled with key switches. And that's what I've done. So what I have is I have my stream deck here and this is my Cubase profile. And you will see I have all these different things set up as buttons on my stream deck. So when I'm producing, I just hit a button and I'm immediately in sample library mode with let's say modulation wheel, and an expression and so on and so forth. So I can go modulation wheel and you will see I have a hotkey here. So there we go. And I can immediately recall all these things. So let me do this on my stream deck very quickly. Modulation wheel, piano CC, modulation and expression, modulation and pitch pen and velocity. And I can switch between them super easily. <laughs> How cool is that? Of course, if you don't have the Stream Deck, you can use any controller because any CC controller that has a button or pads, for example, you can trigger all these things really, really quickly. And I'm gonna show you very quickly how I set this up. I go to key commands and the key commands are right here. You go to MIDI and this is it. Controller lane set up one, two, three, four, five. And you can have up to 16 of these presets. And as you can see, I have assigned some keystrokes, control, alt, and one, two, three, four, five. And this is how I assign all these things to my stream deck. So it's so easy to move between those. So if I'm working on a piano, I just hit the piano and I'm immediately there. I can start producing. So this is one of the things that saves you so much time. And let me know in the comments down below if you know of any DAW that does that. But all the big DAWs that I've tried, at least up to two months ago, they don't have this and it's driving me nuts. So for me, when you're composing, when you're producing, this is one of the reasons why I always go to Cubase. There are DWs that are great for live performance. That's absolutely fine. But when you're producing, when you are in the zone and you want to control your sims, your sample libraries, and pretty much every instrument out there, this thing is so powerful. So in the comments down below, let me know, did you know about this? Did you know that this feature was available in Cubase and you can do all these things so fast? And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already and hit the thumbs up. It really, really helps me so I can make more videos like this for you. None of this is sponsored, so any support I can get from you, I would really appreciate it. So have fun, my friends, take care of yourselves and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!